secondly, you need to answer the question of who Jesus is to you. It's not just a, a bunch of knowledge that you have to deal with. It's what you do with that knowledge that really counts. And this passage of Scripture reminds us in Romans 10, 13, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who is Jesus to you? Is he your Lord? He's not just a historical figure. He's not just a great prophet. He's, just not, he's not just a martyr for a good belief. He's my Lord and my Savior. I yield myself to him. I yield myself to his truth. I yield myself to his direction. I yield myself. I need to cry out to God, confess my sins and repent of those sins and, and yield myself to God. I need to cry out to God. I need to obey. Obey. The O stands for obey. Obey what God commands. You see, we've made, we've made being a believer so easy. All you have to do is say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Nothing ever has to change after that. Is that true? No. Not if it's real and ain't true. Ain't true. Ain't's in the dictionary, by the way. <laughs> no, it's not true. You see, when you ask Jesus to be your Savior... And Lord, you commit yourself to obey his commands. You commit yourself to be changed by his spirit. You commit yourself to becoming what he wants you to become. That obey is very important. He was saying to them all, Luke 9, 23, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And again, he says to them, You are truly my disciples if you do whatsoever, I command you. You see, it has to reach that point, like my children did when they realized Jesus wasn't just their Savior. He had to be their Lord, too. He had to be their boss. They had to obey his commands. And that's where we need to be today. When we cry out to God, we obey his commands. Cry out to God. The U stands for unite with other Christians. Unite with other Christians. You know, here they drew apart from the, the world and they drew together. We need to do the same thing. In Hebrews 10, 22, it says, Let us draw near with a sincere heart. Let us hold fast the confession. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together. We need to draw together. We need to unite with other Christians. What should you get out of church? A great time of music and praise? I mean, that's, that's great, isn't it? I, 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 we have the best band ever. <laughs> uh, you know, God has really blessed us with musical talent. And it changes week, week by week. It doesn't change in quality. It just changes in personnel. <laughs> it is so neat how God has brought together all these... Folks, you know the little person I really feel sorry for, though, is the drummer. I noticed Roy had to quit watching me. Because when I clap, I don't clap at the right times. <laughs> it's just not in me. <laughs> you know, he has to have a sense of rhythm that's not dependent on me for sure, <laughs> or he's in trouble. But is that why we meet just to hear, to hear, uh, to come here and to sing praise and just have a great time, a, a musical time before the Lord? Is that the only reason we're here? I hope not. It's, do we meet here just because we want to see our friends? You couldn't have better friends than what you can have in church. Honestly, there are people with the right morals, the right, the right leading. I mean, they're the ones who are going to care for you when you have needs. You could not have better friends, but is that the only reason we meet here? Because of our friends? No. So why is it that we come together? Why is it that we unite with other Christians? We come here together to worship and to praise our Lord. 
and to do it together so that we can encourage one another and uplift one another and pray for one another and, and, and be there for one another, right? We come here to hold each other accountable. And, and I love the fact that I know that you're holding me accountable as I seek also to help you be accountable before our Lord and Savior. I need that. I need to have this church. I need this church to, to come and to assemble with so I can worship my God in spirit and in truth so that I can and meet with friends and, and, and be loved and love them uh, so that I can care for others and they can care for me. I need to be accountable before my God. I come here to worship Him and to praise Him. But you see how important it is that you we unite together with other Christians? We need each other. We need each other. Finally, the T stands for tell others about the change that God has wrought in our heart. To tell others. You see, when we cry out to God, the natural response of that, when God answers us, is we have to tell other people about it. That's what we heard from Micah today. That's what I've heard several times. I've heard Jack's testimony and Jeff's testimony and uh, different testimonies that celebrate recovery. I love that part. Because God speaks to us through the experience of others. There are people who want to hear how God has changed your life. And when we cry out to God, the end result of that is we are telling others about Jesus. We just looked over a passage in verse 8 of that first chapter. It says, You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We're to tell others. We're to tell others. We're to let other people know about the good news of Jesus Christ. To tell others what God has wrought. Has God made a change in your life? If he hasn't, cry out to God. Cry out. Confess your sins. Repent of those sins. Yield yourself to God. Obey his commands. And, 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 and really unite with other Christians as we seek the Lord together. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. If you haven't experienced salvation, I encourage you to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are a Christian, folks, this time we got serious. Pentecost is coming for our valley. The Holy Spirit's going to move in our valley. Christ is coming again someday soon, number one. But until he comes, he wants to bring revival here. What should we Christians do while we wait? We should cry out to God. How many of you have committed a sin this week? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> Except for, the, of course, those people that just denied they committed the sin. That was your sin for this week. <laughs> We're all sinners. We all do things wrong. When we cry out to God and get our hearts right, we need confession as, as Christians. That's as not as bad. I understand eternal consequences is a little different than temporal consequences. But to live in a daily warm relationship with God, to have the joy, to have the fruits of the spirits mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, to live in that kind of a relationship with God... We need to confess our sins before him and repent of those sins and yield ourselves to God, obey his commands, and do what he wants us to do. We need to get right with God. While we wait for the move of the Holy Spirit in this valley, maybe he's already beginning to move here in this church. While we wait for the full movement of his Holy Spirit, we've got to be, spend some time in the upper room on our knees before God. Amen? I, I want to challenge you to do something with me. Several people committed with me this morning to do this. I want you to consider spending the next three, four days in very serious prayer. Uh, I'm going to fast during that time. I'm going to fast from food. I say I got my wife to hold me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
That's not exactly what I meant by accountable. <laughs> I'm going to fast from TV. I'm going to fast. <laughs> from, from, oh, I, I'm just saying, what can you fast from? Could you take the next three days and take the time you would do something else and give that time to God? Because it's really not about really just the not doing something. It really is about what we replace that time with. Would you spend the time that you would do something else in prayer to God? I'm going to seek with all my heart to the best of my ability with the Lord's help <laughs> to fast and pray, to ask God to really share with me who he wants me to be, to cry out to God. I'm going to ask you to consider that same kind of decision. It's important that you make it for yourself. No one can make it for you. But cry out to God. Let's all cry out to God this week and see what God can do. Amen? What could he do if we all cried out to God? While we wait for the full outpouring of his Holy Spirit on this valley, let's cry out to God and ask him for the revival that he wants to send. To us. Father, I thank you for the blessing that it is to know your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you would create in our hearts a desire to cry out to you, to really seek you with all of our hearts, with all of ourselves. Lord, to commit our lives totally and completely to you. Lord, to have that kind of experience that Micah talked about that uh, many of us have gone through before. Lord, renew and refresh our commitment to you. Lord, become Lord of our lives once more as we submit our lives to you. Lord, help us to turn to you completely and totally, to cry out to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you all please stand as we sing together? If God's spoken to your heart about a decision that he wants you to make, I'm going to ask you to come forward. Hey, before we start the music, could I, I, I got to tell this story. I, I went to one of those pastor's meetings this week. you you, you got to hear this. There's a pastor of a brand new little church in Newcastle. Meets in our old church building where my family was involved in and building it. This pastor, Brother Mike, has cancer. He's just a wisp of a man. No meat on his bones. He's going through treatments and all this kind of stuff. He has to walk with a walk with a cane. He was telling us about how he'd been having a hard time sleeping. It was a Saturday night, and he didn't get to sleep until five o'clock in the morning on Sunday. His alarm was set for seven. The alarm went off. He, he began to tell God, "I can't do this, God." I don't have the strength. I can't preach. I know you've given me a message, but but I can't do it. He was going to call one of his other fellows to preach for him. But God told him no. God told him, I want you to preach. I want you to preach the message I've given you. So he went to church completely exhausted worn out. Got to church, was faithful, obedient to God. And when it came time for him to preach, he said it was amazing. God gave him all the energy he needed to preach a sermon and that he laid on his heart. And that week, it's a little bitty church, maybe 20 people. That week, five people came to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Five people responded to the gospel presentation that week. If he hadn't have preached, if he'd gotten with his own strength, would he have seen the hand of God like he saw it? I don't think so. I don't think so, folks. We need the power of God. We need to cry out to God. Amen? We need as a church to cry out to God. Let's cry out to God as we sing this song, individually and as a church.